everyone, it's Jenny here from Jen Skinner Art. I hope you enjoy this fast forward um, little tutorial or video on me painting some tape dispensers. There's a bit of a joke in my household that if something stands still long enough, I'll paint it. Now these were being given away, um, there's two identical ones and I thought they were a great opportunity to um, play with my colour. At the moment you've just watched me sand them down and that was to give a little bit more tooth to the plastic so it would hold the paint. The white on that is a Tilia Gesso and that's the white that I use when I paint as well but it was a base coat it helps paint adhere to the surface underneath. Now you can see four colors plus the gesso the white gesso and the colors I used were uh, two Josonias one is yellow light and the other is brilliant magenta and then I've got two golden colors so I used anthraquinone blue it's a mouthful and then teal so I use that deep blue instead of black and it allows me to really deepen the colors and you get rich purples which you'll see soon so how I challenged myself I wanted to keep exactly the same four colors and white but end up with the di tape dispensers being um, quite different so they're going to talk to each other because they're using the same colors but I wanted one in the more pinks oranges and purples and the other one to be predominantly blues and greens so it all had to do with the proportion of pink to blue to yellow that I used so I have like a silicon baking tray or baking mat, sorry, on my table surface. That's the pink you can see that my paint's on and it just wipes any excess paint. Like I can clean it off really, really easily. So I often use that as my palette and any leftover paints I um, scrape off and put into my journals, my art journals. Anyway, you're watching me here do the initial mixing. So I'm doing the base coat of the first tape dispenser. I did use my hairdryer to speed up the process. So mostly that's cut out. And I have cut out a lot of the footage where I was painting on the side because you weren't able to see that. Um, maybe I will need to invest in another camera or something so I can film from different angles but anyway I was showing you there that the paint wasn't fully dry I was getting fingerprints in it so I'm going over that little bit don't forget if you um, have a project like this that you paint the inside of that little cavity where the sticky tapes going to um, rest so it just Adds, it's just a detail it adds to the overall look of the piece the little black roll that you insert through the sticky tape I didn't paint that I didn't want any added thickness because they're usually fairly tight on the paint on the sticky tape tubes anyway so I've changed from a broader flat brush and I'm selecting a few options for detailing from my smaller container. So I have a round or a couple of rounds, different sizes and another flat brush that you can see here. And I'm making the shape of the brush actually do the work. It's what's creating the shape for me. So initially I pressed quite firmly down and I ended up with those wide scallops and then lastly I was up on its tippy toe and just doing uh, fine lines. Now I'm working on a finer round and again I'm letting the brush shape do the work. So these are sort of like little teardrops almost. I absolutely love um, doing my spirals so you see that in a lot of my artwork. And now I've swapped to uh, a yellow and I'm sort of doing a stylized petal shape. 
and you will often see me working straight over the top of wet paint because I don't mind the mixing that happens especially when you do spirals it'll pick up the color that's underneath and you end up with a beautiful mix that you can't easily do on a paint palette um, now I'm using that anthraquinone blue making it a really really light blue so there's a there's a change in the sense that I used it with the pink and made a deep purple and now using it with the white I was able to get a pale pale blue and now move to something darker you can see me putting some dots on using the tip of my brush but oftentimes I'll do this with a little ball tool sometimes even a skewer um, you can get some really nice um, round dots that are consistent in size now at the moment two colors are coming out on my brush and that's because I had the dark blue on and then I what I did what you call side loading I picked up a bit of the lighter blue on the side of my brush and then I turned my brush a fraction and I was able to apply both colors at the same time um, it's a little bit frustrating that um, you can't see all the side work anyway it is what it is so this as I said is the first tape dispenser and at the moment I would consider all of this base coating even though I've I'm starting to put some details on I did a base coat of white I did a base coat of mixed colors now I'm doing a third base coat which is putting in some patterning detail and design and then I like to finish off using the paint mixes that I have in my little squeeze bottles so they add an extra dimension and I can choose to enhance one of the base coat patterns or colors or I can completely ignore them and go totally over the top without worrying um, about what's underneath so hopefully on the side you can see a little bit of the way I'm color mixing so it's a tiny bit of the pink and the yellow we're getting a pretty salmon adding a little bit more white so I flip this one over onto its side so you can see me do a little bit of work here it's not totally hidden and you can see that the the first lot of base coating I didn't try and do block colors I've blended them a little bit so the purple into the green and the yellow into the green um, yeah I just I enjoy the freedom of just being able to play and not necessarily um, having a, a definite objective I'm not trying to keep really sharp lines nor am I trying to blend perfectly as though it was a sunset um, I can just do whatever I feel like doing all right those little ones I was side loading again I had pink and white in my brush you can see it happening a little bit here it's blending on my brush and I've almost completed this one and we will pick up the second but you, when you try something like this you've got to give yourself the freedom to play like I know it's an object that's going to be used but if I really really didn't like what I'd, I've done all I'd have to do is soak it in some water and peel all the paint off in fact it would just about fall off and start again I actually find working on things like that more free than in a journal because although a lot of people say a journal is a place to play uh, it's still stuck in there <laughs> it's still part of a book whereas these you can easily just wipe off now here we start on the second one and already you can see a difference I'm mixing the teal and the yellow and making it much more a blue green 
And now you're going to see me get a neutral color. I don't know if you've noticed that I rarely wash a brush. So because I had the blue and yellow and then I picked up a little bit of pink, I actually um, mixed up more of a neutral color than a pure orange. So in some ways it looks a little bit muddy, but I like that. I like the contrast. The other one is much sharper and then this one in the initial layers is more muted. So there will be some correlation. There'll be some colors that are identical like this blue and white mixed together and purple that you saw earlier. But I'm mainly focusing on the greens and blues as opposed to the purples and pinks. There's a little bit more of the neutral color. It just means that I haven't washed my brush and I've got all the colors in together all mixed here I go with letting my brush do its work again so taking advantage of the fact that it's flat and you'll notice that when I do the spirals it's shifting the paint so I'm getting another, I've got a bright purple there on the end and then a neutral color as it goes through the mustardy yellow. I had to remember to keep doing those little side bits so I wanted to forget those. Now there's very little white left on my palette and the white that we do have is grayed down so it's got little bits of other color in it. So I am sure that I will be putting out a little bit more white before too long. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> you forget the way you do things. I mean, you know what you would do, but did I in fact do it that way? I don't know. So now I've got really almost like a um, khaki green that I've mixed up. So it's a very muted one. I can see that I'm doing circles on the side. Again, I'm sorry that you can't see that clearly. Really, you're only getting um, to view the color mixing. And throughout all of this, I am not washing my brush. So uh, it's not a matter of me cutting it out. I'm just literally not washing it. And at this point, with the second dispenser, I also hadn't um, used a hairdryer. So there they are. And getting ready to do what I would call the final touches. So doing the upper layers. And these little squeeze bottles have a whole variety of things in them. So some of them are just fluid acrylics. Others are a more heavy bodied paint and I've had to um, make it more liquid. So I don't tend to use water. I use a fluid medium. It just binds the paint pigments a little bit better. And I like the fact that when I use these small bottles I can get really really scratchy uneven marks if I work quickly or I can get quite thick lines or dots so it's all in the pressure of how much paint I'm squeezing out and how slow I apply it. Okay, well I've finished these two um, sticky tape dispensers and the interesting thing as you've seen is that I used exactly the same colours for both of these and yet they've come out completely different. So now I'm at the point where I need to put a lacquer on and it's always better if you lacquer or put your final coat on outside. So I have a few options here. Um, this one is a clear coat by Porter's. Um, I could use that. Why am I using golden? Simply because it's easier to get into. So it's simply a matter of applying in a nice well ventilated 
space and trying not to get too many air bubbles or also runs. It's better to do two thinner coats than it is to put one really heavy one on, which is probably the same with all painting. If you apply your paint too thickly and you don't intend to have runs, that's what you'll end up getting. So there we go. One completely finished, unless I decide to do a second coat. And now I'll go with the pinker version and, um, and we'll be finished. Okay, so now for this little one, putting on a nice thin coat. I'm not fussing with the lacquer. I don't want to end up with little brush strokes in it. So I'm trying to do nice, long, smooth, even strokes. It also helps get rid of the air bubbles. And something I um, neglected to mention when I was working on the other one is that it's important to do this edge here. It's going to get a lot of wear and tear. So I want to make sure that this final coat goes on the inside of this little lip where the sticky tape dispenser part will actually um, go in. So I am coating the whole lot, but that really doesn't matter. It's more that little top edge. So I'll just finish it off here, a little bit on the top. It doesn't take long and it'll dry quickly out here in the breeze too. Alrighty. I'm very happy with that. Done. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've had fun. Maybe give it a go yourself. You only need a few colours and um, you can create something wonderful. Bye.